All right, Mark Lawrence is with us. Mark, we might actually start with, with Leeds because we've just skipped over them there. But uh, what an achievement to get out of it. And Rafinha with the fans celebrating is the best aspect of players and fans' connection in the immediate aftermath. How did they manage to get out of the trouble they were in over the last few weeks? What is it about them? Um, resilience, I suppose. Um, and they are kind of bloody-minded. I mean, in, in the previous games, they were playing angry. And you, you saw that in terms of getting players sent off. And in fairness to the, to the manager, I, I struggle a bit to listen to him because it's sometimes like, really? But he's he's done a very, very good job. Look, w- w- without the best players as well, and conceding loads of goals this season, it's one of those where you, you're just happy to get out of it. Um, and, you know, they, they, they've done it. That's the most important thing. It doesn't really matter how, but they've done it and obviously can start again next season. There's been a few teams in recent seasons who have used their last day escape to become mid-table or, you know, safe from relegation earlier in the season. Villa were one of them, for example. And yeah. y- you would think if they can keep Calvin Phillips for one more year and if Bamford comes back, then all of a sudden they're just a completely different team from the start next year. Yeah, uh, isn't there, isn't there um, and I think it's more than taught, that they're going to be bought out Yes, the, the, the 49ers have, have been investing in them slowly over the last couple of years. and Right. I mean, they're not well, they're not owners who have loads of money to invest. They are billionaires on the basis of the fact that they own an American football team, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they, they will They will obviously, they will invest, though. I mean, I mean, the team will be invested in, as in getting new players, because, you know, the big tranche of um, Premier League money that, that now comes in, they might want to, Get rid of one of the players, maybe 50, 60 million, and and you know two or three players in stuff like that. But I don't I don't see them having a problem next season. And also, by the way, when when you look at the teams that are going to come up um, straight away, they've not even played a game. But you're thinking, really, Bournemouth, Fulham, um, Forest might make it, obviously. But I mean, Forest three best players arguably are the three lone players. So. Um, I think it might even be easier next year to stay in the league if you're a if you're a Leeds or an Everton or, or one of those teams. When you said there a moment ago, you struggled to listen to the manager. What, what do you mean by that? Um, I just think he's full of SH1T at times. It's like you know, he's talking stuff, quoting quoting Kipling to players doesn't doesn't work. Rudyard Kipling. It's probably Mr. Kipling would have been better, but it's just, I don't I don't get all that you know, and it's like. Um, I remember when I was at Brighton and we used to have the um, the, the poem, If, and, and occasionally Alan, Alan Mullery, who was a manager, would obviously point to it. says, you, you look, it's there in the dressing room all the time. You forgot to, you know, read this before you go out and all that kind of stuff. And the players end up throwing mud at it and all that, that, that kind of stuff. So I think with, with, with players, the least amount of information you give them the better. They they don't understand all these quotes and stuff, do they? Um, someone might. Well, someone might do, but uh, might might be an exception. Well, they won't. They won't. I'll tell you now. There won't be many. There will not be many, and they won't even know the, who Kipling is. Seriously, no chance. <laughs> we need to. We need to. You need to go in and change that, uh, Mark. Um, the <laughs> the debate the then, on the, just on the other side of that, very quickly before we move on to the. Um, title race in Manchester City. Yeah. It's just Burnley and uh, the job that Mike Jackson did in the aftermath of the Sean Dyche sacking. It did seem yesterday a lot of people pushed the button on, ah, oh, that's what you get for uh, sacking Sean Dyche and uh, you, you deserve everything you got, Burnley. Where, where do you sit on, on that conversation? Well, Sean Dyche did a really, really good job, but he probably just outstayed his, his welcome, in all honesty. It probably, you know, it was time for him to walk up, to walk away. Um, my my problem about all that is is this guy who owns them doesn't he now have to pay sixty million quid because because of the way he borrowed the money to buy the football club which straight away is a worry so you know there's going to be a fire sale but I think and I know I know Mike Jackson because he was at Preston for a while um, under David played under David Moyes and he, he's done a really good job because I think he just he, he gave them a little bit of freedom it was almost right you know what whatever's happened. Let's just go out and play. And he immediately played with a little bit of width. We know they've got two stroke three big centre forward, big, big centre forwards who thrive on the crosses from either side. And he got an immediate um, sort of, well, be- better, far better results is, is, is a work, word I'm looking for. But there was always then a case where you think, well, how long will it last? And, and unfortunately, probably 
didn't last quite long enough. But I don't think he'll get the job, will he? I mean, be able, everybody will be sending the CVs in as we speak, so um, which which is a pity for him. But uh, you can imagine that's the way the world is, isn't it? And, it, and the championship, as I know, is 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 dog eat dog. By the way. It'd be very interesting to see how well they do down there. The parachute payment might look after the sixty million immediate, but they're not going to be able to spend it on players. You know, it's going to be. I don't think. I don't think it will look after. I think. I think the way that, that, it, that he's, he's borrowed this money, I think, is a, a real worry for, for for the supporters. But you know, they've, they've got players that they can sell, obviously, and and some will want to go anyway. But. Um, Nathan Collins is one that has already, from an Irish perspective, been linked away. Did he do enough over the year to say, yeah, here's a here's a Premier League centre back in the making? Um, possibly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put him like if you split the Premier League into three divisions, he would be in the third division as yet. But yeah, possibly. I mean, he, you know, he's got good habits, and he will have good habits under Sean Dice in terms of defensively. So. He's got a chance, but I mean, Tchaikovsky is it? I think he'll he'll go. Um, McNeil will probably look to go. The guy they signed from France is Corne. Yeah, they, he's, they, yeah. they won't be hanging around, will they? Then then they're, they're not going to do a, a season in the championship. And you know, straight away you're dismantling the team. And and unless you've got fantastic recruitment, thinking that you were going down, but you've looked at quite a few other teams in the in the championship if you compete some of their players I think it's going to be a struggle for them All right, Let's talk a little bit about uh, what happened in the game between uh, Manchester City and Aston Villa. I'm an Aston Villa fan so no, at no stage, even when it was 2-0 did I think well, that's over, I can put the feet up here I've seen this movie a lot particularly against the good teams where Villa miss a host of chances it, yeah. it, it could have been 4 at 4-0 I would have been, oh this is interesting I'm, I'm, I maybe have a little bit of faith that they, they might be able to see this through, but um, what did you make of it? Well, I mean, it's just fantastic television. That's the first thing, wasn't it? And also yesterday, I mean, on, on Sky, you could watch all the, all the goals going. I was doing the Liverpool game, so I wasn't party to that, but everyone was telling me it was just brilliant. So, um, should have been 3-0, most definitely. 3-0, I think, I think City would have struggled to come back. Um, and obviously, you know... The irony as well would be that, you know, Gundogan coming on and scoring twice. Well, he used to play for Klopp, didn't he? So I bet that went down well. But listen, um, City can do this. Big, the big teams tend to see it, to do this on a regular, on regular occasions. I mean, you look at you look at Madrid against City. Um, you know, in other games that we've seen, we've seen that with Liverpool as well. But I just think with teams like like Aston Villa is, even though you were two 0 up, I don't really think amongst that team that they really believed that they were going to at least draw the game. Never mind even win it because you're almost as a, as a as a player you're waiting for the onslaught to happen and once the first goal went in it just triggered everything else. They did fall really quickly like a house of cards yeah. after that. Yeah, well, that's it was it was like the inevitable, isn't it? Because it, you go to the game and you're thinking, "Crikey, we might get absolutely punnelled here today. We might get a five and start really well and score. And it's almost like you can't believe how well you're doing. And I think, you know, with, with the lower teams against the really top teams, it's then a case of, well, you know, when's when's the hurricane coming? It, you know, it must come at any kind of time. And then you only need one or two thinking, oh, it's here, it's here, and you're all over the place. And just the way that I mean, City just swarmed all over them, didn't they, in all honesty. Is that because that's always, always the case where the top teams in any championship winning side if you think back to Ferguson's Manchester United they were capable mm. of doing this as well is that inevitable or should the should all the teams in the Premier League now be able to batten down the hatches at 2-0 up given the money well, and resources that they have well this, this, should, this should be more competitive from that point of view but the, the problem is is that you know players just lose concentration and not only that when you, when you play against the Liverpools and the Manchester Cities of, of this world they work you so hard. They're super fit. Uh, they make you know that the ball always travels quicker than than a man can. So the passing's really is it zips into to players, and it's it's really really difficult. By the time you get to about 70, 75 minutes, you kind of you're like, wow, hold on, how how long left is there that we need to hold out for? So it's more of a case that that's that's why Premier League teams score the good ones score so many late goals, is because. 
the opposition, mentally and physically, are whacked. Where do you stand on what Manchester City can improve on next season? Like It did feel that if you take yesterday in isolation, there was obviously a bit of a glaring weakness at the heart of their defence, but you'd assume mm. if Diaz and, and Laporte are fit for a full season, if they got their full-backs fit for a full season, it's, it's an incredible defence, yeah. an incredible goalkeeper, and no, and no problems there. But at the same time, they did still have to make do with Fernandinho at the centre of their defence yesterday. So does that suggest that there's a, a potential weakness starting to emerge there if we, if we look ahead to the next season? Well, you missed stones out as well, haven't you? So you've got to throw stones in. So no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Mm. I don't see it. And the thing about playing against Manchester City is they probably, on a regular basis, have seventy percent of the ball, of the, you know, in the game. So what you're saying to the opposition is that the thirty percent time and chances that you have, you know, get on with it because you, you're not going to have much of the ball to actually score goals against them. So no, I don't. I don't see that as, as being an issue. Um, Haaland is just, <clears throat> I think he's a really good signing. He's an interesting signing, but it'll be interesting to see who needs to adapt, whether it's he to the team or the team to him. Um, we've seen that a bit with Grealish as well this year, haven't we? Whether he's done okay, probably six out of ten, you would say. If you see Haaland's goals, a lot of them are, are you know, when he's running onto green grass and um, towards the goalkeeper, etc. And City play, you know, lovely little um, passes, intricate passes, etc. I'm not saying he can't play that way, but I, I think with him a little bit is get, get it get it into areas early for him. But that's not really the way that City plays, so it's going to be really, really interesting. But of course, if he catches fire, well, good night, Lucy, to everybody else. Um, David Moyes, obviously, in the Conference League, very disappointed with the way the season ended because it looked like they might be in the Champions League and then yeah. it looked like they were going to be in the Europa League. And finally, there will be European football next season, but it's not what he wanted. No, well, the, you know, as you know, I know him, and uh, he's been saying for a few weeks they're absolutely late. They were just so leggy, and although he did change the team quite quite regularly in Europe, I mean, there's so many players played so many games, and he just said just didn't quite have enough, not just enough players, but just that extra two or three quality players, which I think you get in the summer. So. Um, Still a good achievement, obviously, and you know he's pushed. They pushed everybody in that league, and they're very, very difficult to play against. And with a few additions, you know they they, they will be better. But now they just they, they ran out of steam, basically. And will Declan Rice be there next season? Do you think? I would have thought so. I would have thought he'd probably do another year. Um, but you, you just you just never know. But he's going to be an awful lot of money for everybody wants to buy him. And I think he's got has he got two years left or even three? Yeah, two plus one, I think. Yeah, two plus one. So yeah, I would, I would think so. And he doesn't seem the type of boy who's going to knock on the door and say, "Right, I've done my bit for you. I want to clear off." But then, of course, and I mean, you know, if somebody comes in and says, "Well, we'll give you hundred million for him," you, you might be tempted to, to take it. Uh, just on Liverpool. Obviously, they held up their end of the bargain and would have probably gone down as, a, as an epic comeback themselves had uh, Manchester mm. City been held by Aston Villa. One of the interesting storylines, obviously, from yesterday is it looks like Thiago is going to be a massive doubt for the Champions League final. It looks like yeah. Klopp has basically said that he's going to miss the, 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 the game next Saturday, this Saturday. Yeah. Um, just on that mark, just how, how significant the loss is that in the context of that Real Madrid well, game? Well, what about, the go what about the goal he created? Mm. Uh, there, there's, there's nobody... Nobody, apart from De Bruyne in the Premier League, would even think about trying to trying to pull that one off. And he sets the tempo for them. He's and he, his passing's not just great; it's just he hits the ball into you really quickly. And it, you know, if you're a decent player, it's much easier to to control when it comes in quickly. But um, and he's very much the heartbeat and creativity. And I, I think Fabinho's probably struggling as well because up until yesterday, I don't I don't think he'd been on the training ground. So, so, so he's another one which is a worry, worry for them because Cater's okay. Obviously, Henderson will be in there, but then you, you know you, you might have to chuck somebody else in as well. Which Milner going to start? Who Milner? Is he potentially going to start the Champions League final? Um, I don't think so. Although you never know which club, but I mean, um, he trusts him. So maybe that's what he wants when he looks at the other players and thinks, well, let's let's just let's just be really solid in midfield and be difficult to play against, and and let the front three do their bit against sometimes a weakened Real Madrid side. But I'm not I'm not sure you can't 
I don't really know anyone else that is that is going to play. In all honesty, um, you won't you won't think you put any of the kids in. Um, they've disappointed in a little, not disappointed, but they haven't really kicked on um, as as he thought they would. So yeah, maybe maybe Milner will start. You know what you get from him. So I mean, you know, he's an up and downer, and he, he works extremely hard. He's experienced, but we're talking about trying to create goals to, to uh, sorry chances to beat Real Madrid in a final. Yeah. Yeah, plenty for him to think about over the course of the week, Mark. You've been great. Thanks a million. No problem. Thank you. It's Mark Aronson giving us his thoughts there on the situation. Um, like We did talk about the injuries this week and the unlikelihood of them being able to pull back Manchester City. I don't know. What, I, you're a neutral. Uh, what did you think when it was 2-0? Well, I thought Manchester City are screwed because I actually thought that... Did you? Uh, yeah, I did. I, um, obviously, I was wrong, as I'm wrong about a lot of things. I... I thought they were screwed in a way that I thought that they were being opened up by Aston Villa. That I thought that, you know, the, the more this game goes on, the it more should happen. Villa it should could, continue to happen. Yeah, that Villa could catch them on the break. The thing is that they, um, it, was, it was the second goal really, once they equalised, then he knew it was, the, the third was going to come at, at any point. If there had been a bit of a gap between the first and then Villa had, you know, put in a, a titanic effort and then all of a sudden Manchester City limped over to get a second, Villa would be like, okay, just one more effort you know, whatever it might have been, five to ten minutes, and we'll get there, then they might have been able to do it. But I just think the, it was just the quick-fire nature of the first two goals. You thought, OK, well, the, the, third, is, the third is coming now. Um, See, so. as, soon as, as soon as the first one went in, I was like... Well, you knew. You've, you've been familiar. But does okay. yesterday not prove, you, prove the point that Liverpool were right to not give in on I don't this know. I, I don't know, because I think that it was inevitable, irrespective of, like... I think that there's a case if it had gone 3-0... That it still would have <laughs> would have been four three. I do like it depends on what time it scored. But even then, you know, like um, I don't know. It does feel, it does feel like I've seen the Villa film before. That for for all of you out there wondering what it's like to support Aston Villa, that's it. Moments of absolute brilliance, mm. and then this terror that oh no, we scored too soon. You know the way it's like um, the statisticians and the nerds always give out about people who say the 2-0 lead in football is the uh, most dangerous lead because it's not I mean, you know, statistically they are correct it is obviously not but if you are an underdog and you go 2-0 up against a good team it is the most dangerous lead in football because you're like so close to being exciting you're like you're just getting exciting and we're going to do this and then I'd say maybe one in a hundred times will I manage to see off a United or a Liverpool or a City as it is now like yeah. they were 2-0 up one time against Inter in like the U- the UEFA Cup, when Tony Cascarino was playing, and he missed an absolute sitter, and that is the history. It's like Mayo kicking wides. That's that's what it is. It's like ah, oh, sounds like this we, is our culture. Yeah, it sounds like you really wanted Liverpool to, to do it yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not necessarily sure. Like we, we we go through like all the different storylines yesterday. Like there were, there were three there were three different stories yesterday. Uh, at the top, Liverpool showed frailty. Manchester City showed frailty. At the bottom, Burnley obviously showed frailty. Leeds uh, stuttered a little bit as well. And in the top four race, Tottenham showed absolutely no nerves whatsoever. That on the final day of the season, the only team that were nerveless and steely was Tottenham Hotspur. That's interesting, isn't it? What's coming next season? That's, that's the Conte bounce. The, well, it's a hurricane if he stays. If Who's finishing third next season? Does Kylian Mbappe get Antonio Conte? And then you're like... Kylian Mbappe is an absolute genius. He got Antonio Conte. <laughs> like, Does if Antonio Conte is looking at the deal that has just been done for Kylian Mbappe and he's gone, so you gave him 150 million signing on fee, but if I am the manager who delivers the holy grail for you, I want a 100 million bonus. Well, who, who would you rather be your boss, Daniel Levy or Kylian Mbappe? I'd say Kylian Mbappe is more crack. I'd say a night out with Kylian Mbappe is better than a night out, oh, you're getting the tasting menu and you're getting the wine pairing with Daniel Levy, but with Kylian Mbappe, you're getting the whole city. 